Hello everyone. Uh, today I want to show you a little bit about painting with values. Now, we look here. This is a drawing I've, I've done uh, entirely with just, you know, grayscale values. And I've treated, when, when you look at this, you know, you can tell that um, all of the light that's in this scene is coming from from behind and slightly to the uh, to the left. It's coming from the left and it's falling towards the right. And all I'm using is something I like to call a, a it's just it's just a gradient. It's just a it's a simple gradient transition. You know, you you can just see how everything goes from banding from left to right. This leg, you know, right here from the, from, from either side, that is just one gradient. And same thing when you look at the uh, the hips from one side to the next side, it's just one banded gradient. Um, I've got things like, you know, there's a cast shadow there, but for the most part, it's all it's all just gradients and maybe a few cast shadows. It's quite simple. Um, these are a number of uh, swatches that I worked on uh, just, just now, just for this demonstration, showing um, a bunch of different gradients on different backgrounds. So, in this particular uh, swatch here, um, this is this looks like you know you've got a cylindrical shape that is lit from the front. Um, you can tell it's lit from the front because the lightest part is in the middle, um, whereas things that are lit from behind, the lightest part will be at the outsides. You know these these ones here have been lit from behind. This one's been lit from the front. That's been lit from the side. Uh, you can tell based on the position of the lightest spot and the darkest spot uh, where the light is coming from this you know you have to be uh, aware of the direction of the, of the light so if I let's say start a new one you know if I was to work on let's say a black room let's say I have a, a dark room oh, let me uh, let me get my fill tool okay so we started with a, uh, a you know dark room, then here we are. Anytime I lay down a um, a line, that's like that's almost like saying, "Hey, there's there's light striking this surface in in the dark." Um, and if I choose to make it so that one side is thicker than the other side. You know, it makes it seem as if the light is coming from up high. It's coming from up high and it's it's slightly in front. Whereas, if I do something like this, um, there, now it's almost as if the light source is, is in front and it's casting backwards on this object here. You, it's you're, the the outside's not going to light up. What would happen instead would be maybe something more like like that. Uh, let's see. I need black. Okay. Now, anytime you've got an object that's lit. Um, such as in the case of this one back here, um, you're going to get, if it's sitting on the ground, and the ground is also going to catch some light. So, ground might catch light like that, but then you have to figure out how does this thing cast the shadow. There's the, the, the light source up there. then it makes sense that it's going to cast a shadow backwards. So do try to be mindful of which way the light is coming from because when you know which way the light is coming from you can tell which direction the shadows will be cast onto your backdrop. And I can just peel. A, I can just pull back a little bit of the uh, the lighting because some of this light is now bouncing from the floor, and it's ricocheting up onto this surface. 
Now, when you do a, um, a gradient transition, let's say I'm going to do one that's lit from above. I need a background again. Okay, if you're doing something that is lit from above, I'm just going to uh, say you have to consider how fat is this, how fat is the overall form. You know, if I have a cylinder like that, it almost looks like it's backlit right now. But you have to figure out how fat should this band of color be. If the light is sitting directly behind this object, then this is what you'll get. As the light rises up into the air, you're going to see progressively thicker and thicker banding until you have something like that. And if the light starts coming to the point where it's in front of this object, then the, the banding is going to continue to go down. So the, the, the thickness of the banding is really affecting the direction that the light is coming from. And now when the thing is completely lit like that, it's as if the light's coming from in front. Now, what I am going to do is I'm just going to figure out how much to um, darken. You have to consider how thick the band has to be. Um, you have to adjust the thickness of the band until it looks right. I can't really give you the rule for that. Um, but all it is is when, whenever you're looking at an object from the side, like this, then, hang on, let me start a new, uh, new drawing. Okay, if we look at the cylinder from the side, and your eye is here, you're looking at it. If the light source is directly behind you, or coming from you, like in the case of using flash photography, then you are going to be able to, you're going to light up everything that you can see. That's what is going to happen. But if the light source moves higher into the sky, then wherever the light source is tangential is going to light up. And some of the bottom you know, some of the bottom of this this uh, sphere, hang on, oops, this portion is going to be dark. And when the light moves this high, then you're going to see, well, roughly half, like that. And if the light moves really close, like that, then you're going to see less than half. So you have to know the surface before you can light it. You have to know the surface, you need to know the position of the light to figure out how fat is that band of light. So what you should do for practice is um, every time you have to do, let's say, uh, you know, start, start with maybe a gray background. Try it on different backgrounds. Try it on gray backgrounds, on white backgrounds, and black backgrounds. And limit yourself to using black, gray, or white. Because this is this is about being able to control the um, the, the you know the, the intensity of of, uh, of your subject. Now if I'm gonna light something from the front then I'm gonna use I'm gonna use I'm gonna use a black outline. So I'm lighting this from the front now I can use a white there appears like it's been lit from the front if I'm lighting something from behind then I'll use a white outline and I'll use black instead so I figure how thick does that black band have to be then go to the, op the semi opaque brush and figure out how far shall I pull this gradient maybe do one more level. So you have to do that until you get that sense that you're actually, you know, sensing you when you when you look at it, it has to look real to you, you know. So you have to practice that until you can you can get the lighting situation. So that's all for now.